Yo. Nah, how many you guys want? Hey, you guys aren't narcs, are you? Oh, Come on. Baby, you're a narc. Hey, you know who calls people narcs? Narcs. Narc. Whoa. Bro, I use fentanyl all the time on my patients in a hospital setting. Today, I'll tell you why this drug is such a reliable option for managing pain, how it is used by medical professionals, and why it is so dangerous when used incorrectly. This is your brain. This is your brain on drugs. First of all, it is extremely strong. 100 times more potent than morphine as reported by the World Health Organization in 2017. I can give someone one microgram or one thousandth of a gram via an IV and relieve severe pain almost instantaneously. Oh. Oh no, Jesus. Look at his spine. 10 seconds later. He's rising up. Something is happening. Something is happening. For reference, this is faster acting and 20 to 40 times more potent than even heroin. This photo from the New Hampshire State Police Forensics Lab shows lethal doses of both drugs. Both fentanyl and heroin belong to a class of drugs called opioids. That's more of an umbrella term and it's encompassing any compound that is going to bind to and have an action on opioid receptors in the body. That's Justin Cottle from the Institute of Human Anatomy here on YouTube. They've got a great video on this topic that explains the mechanism of addiction in great detail. I suggest you cue it up for later. Now, opioid receptors live in the nervous system embedded in the outer membrane of your neurons which are distributed throughout the body. When opioids bind to these receptors, the interaction triggers a series of chemical changes that lead to feelings of pleasure and pain relief. Some opioids, such as morphine and codeine, occur naturally. We refer to these as opiates. Opiates live under the opioid umbrella alongside other semi-synthetic compounds, like heroin, and synthetic compounds, like fentanyl. The differences in the chemical structures of the compounds determine how quickly the drugs traverse through the body to arrive at our opioid receptors and how tightly they bind to those receptors. Fentanyl runs like a freaking cheetah. And binds to the opioid receptors like an alligator in a death roll. At the Opioid Olympics, fentanyl takes first place. Now you may be wondering why the body has opioid receptors in the first place. Well, it comes down to the fact that your body makes its own opioids to bind to those receptors. That's right, our body is a self-contained pharmaceutical lab. The opioids produced by the body are labeled endogenous and they help you to regulate pain, among other things, causing it to subside when we are no longer directly in harm's way. Exogenous opioids, on the other hand, are produced outside the body, but are capable of hijacking our natural opioid receptor sites. Heroin, morphine, or fentanyl will bind to those receptors. Taking advantage of something that's already there is they cause an exaggerated response. Very exaggerated in fentanyl's case. In the hands of trained professionals with access to the proper equipment, fentanyl actually has a pretty wide therapeutic index, or range within which the drug is both effective and safe. For most people, when opioids are taken as prescribed for a short time, they are fairly safe and effective. Fentanyl has a relatively short duration, between one to two hours, and can be effectively rationed and controlled in a medical setting. These drugs can be taken in ways that weren't prescribed, such as taking too many, taking them to get high, or giving them to someone else. We typically use it in situations where the patient is going to be in a lot of pain for a short duration of time. For many procedures with a short duration, general anesthesia is overkill. For example, if I need to reduce a fracture. You know, you walk in with a broken forearm and I need to coerce the bones back into proper alignment. We'll be done in about five to 10 minutes, but without pain medication that could feel like forever. So you'll receive a sedative to make you more relaxed and a dose of fentanyl. Thank you doctor, take two of these and call me in the morning. Then in most cases the surgeon creates traction by pulling the bone fragments away from each other then guides them back into place as gently as possible. But as you can see this procedure is not exactly gentle and sometimes other forces must be applied to restore the structure of the broken bone. 
Early on in my career, I reduced a broken ankle belonging to an overconfident young man who swore up and down that he didn't require anything for the pain. No, I don't want any pain relief. You can do the surgery without it. That was one of only two times I have ever reduced a fracture with no pain medication. He turned green, by the way, while trying desperately to keep it together. The other instance was a forearm fracture that happened to a player at one of my son's football games. As he ran towards the bench holding his arm, I recognized the extent of his injury and was able to reduce the fracture while he was still in shock. When something traumatic happens, the body releases endorphins, an example of natural opioids mentioned earlier, and adrenaline, capable of masking surprising measures of pain. But in the hospital setting, you'll be sedated and receive a dose of fentanyl for this type of procedure. Relax, I'm gonna pop it back in. <laughs> Get in there. Some surgeries and procedures do not require the use of full general anesthesia. I'm not saying I like pain, but I'm not saying I don't like it either. And to clarify, the sedation administered here is different from general anesthesia. With sedation, the goal is to sedate you enough that you are relaxed, sleepy, comfortable, and breathing on your own. Medicines for sedation are given through an IV. Whereas general anesthesia is technically a reversible drug-induced coma, a much longer and more dangerous ordeal. Often, anesthesiologists refer to this coma as sleep to avoid disturbing their patients, but that term can be misleading. However, even under general anesthesia and sedation, the body can react to pain. And in most cases, you will receive pain medication alongside both of them. Sunglasses and Advil. Last night was mad real. Let me explain. Under general anesthesia, you are unconscious and therefore completely unaware of the pain, but the pain receptors in your body still register that something is disrupting homeostasis. You know, like slicing into your abdomen or sawing on a bone, which can cause involuntary movement. Hence, a mixture of anesthesia and pain medication is usually necessary. Even though you aren't aware of it, some surgeries are more painful than others, and when there is more pain, there is a higher likelihood of involuntary movement. For example, Anything where I have to cut the bone, thus aggravating the sensitive periosteum, or the membrane of blood vessels and nerves that wraps around them, delivering blood and enabling sensation, is likely to be quite painful. While you're asleep, you may be given fluids and other drugs, such as painkillers, anti-sickness medicines, or antibiotics, through the drip in your hand. Such as fentanyl. It is administered directly to the bloodstream via intravenous, allowing it to act as quickly and powerfully as possible. Typically, once the surgical procedure is complete, we will transition the patient from IV to oral pain medication as quickly as possible. Depending on the level of pain, we may still prescribe narcotics, another name for opioids, orally. Taken orally, they must be digested and metabolized by the body to switch to a usable form, which accounts for the approximate 10 to 20 minute delay compared to IV drugs. Ideally, by the time a patient is leaving the hospital, they have transitioned to non-narcotic oral pain medication. The patient medication protocol looks something like this. IV narcotics, during or immediately following surgery. Oral narcotics, after surgery. Oral non-narcotics, upon release from hospital. No pain medication, several weeks into the recovery. There are several other applications where fentanyl's relative strength is very helpful. In some cases, the patient may have developed a tolerance to opioids through long-standing addiction. Tolerance means the drug is less effective over time when opioid receptors become less sensitive to the effects of the drug. And if you're just about to go under for surgery. As a result, more of the drug needs to be taken for you to get pain relief. In order to proceed with treatment, we must determine what drug and dosage is sufficient to stimulate their opioid receptors and suppress pain. This could mean a dose of fentanyl instead of morphine or even a larger dose of fentanyl in extreme cases. Some people must receive a dose of fentanyl that would be fatal in a person with no tolerance to the drug. One study in the World Journal of Emergency Medicine showed that fentanyl can decrease pain more rapidly than morphine in opioid addicted patients with less adverse side effects. And that more patients in the morphine group 
31.6% of patients needed rescue analgesia. Fentanyl can also be used to treat severe chronic pain, as may be present in some people with extreme forms of cancer. Over time, a patient with chronic pain may also develop a tolerance to lesser painkillers such as morphine and require something more potent. In some cases, the drug can be administered transdermally a method that holds some advantage over oral administration, especially when dealing with a drug as powerful as fentanyl. These pressure sensitive adhesives administer drugs through the skin in a controlled manner with higher therapeutic bioavailability than their oral counterparts. Once the doctor determines the dosage, there is less likelihood that the patient will deviate from the prescription plan. This is especially relevant with fentanyl, which is so powerful it can easily cause an overdose. In 2013 or so, it was fentanyl that overtook both OxyContin and heroin on the center stage in the opioid epidemic. Thanks, Justin. The CDC reports rates of overdose deaths involving synthetic opioids other than methadone, which includes fentanyl and fentanyl analogs, increased over 56% from 2019 to 2020. More than 56,000 people died from overdoses involving synthetic opioids in 2020. Fentanyl was not designed for recreational use outside of the hospital. It is odorless and tasteless. As far as the dog's concerned, there's nothing there. 100% undetectable, pure. It may look identical to heroin, which need I remind you is far less powerful and can be mixed with other drugs such as cocaine. As we already know, it binds very tightly to our opioid receptors, causing an intense high that lasts only a few hours. And when the high is gone, the withdrawal can be unbearable. Think about this. Right, if you're so used to not feeling pain, when that fully comes online, your shirt itself can become painful. Yes, indeed. In a sense, you establish a new sensation baseline under the influence of the drug and your body is used to experiencing the world through that framework. When that stimulus is gone, even the most basic bodily sensations can become very, very painful. This information is especially relevant today as an ongoing sense of uncertainty pushes many people to more powerful drugs for recreational use. Again, the CDC reports, the latest provisional drug overdose death counts through June 2021 suggest an acceleration of overdose deaths during the COVID-19 pandemic. Every narcotic has three main effects, works on pain, suppressing pain sensations in the body, works on the brain, central nervous system depressant, and works on the gut, slows down your gut metabolism. And the difference between narcotics, aside from their speed and potency, is the relative balance between each of these factors and how they affect each of these areas. Remember before when I mentioned the opioid receptors? Well, it turns out there are several types. Among them, mu, kappa, and delta receptor types. Now you're gonna find the mu receptor and these other receptors throughout the entire body, but they're gonna be in different densities. Mu opioid receptors like to hang out in several places, the gut and the brainstem. As it turns out, fentanyl will bind to mu opioid receptors whenever possible. When fentanyl binds tightly to the mu receptors in the gut, you become constipated. Opioid drugs inhibit gastric emptying and peristalsis, or the undulating movement of the GI tract. Stimulation of the opioid receptors in the gut causes a change in the biochemistry of the cells that results in a reduction of the neurotransmitters that control gut function. Uncomfortable, but you can survive constipation. What about when fentanyl binds to the mu receptors in the brainstem? This causes a depressant effect on the CNS and can slow breathing and heart rate, both of which can lead to death. To me, the worst part is that all this is happening while fentanyl suppresses pain and causes euphoria. And when the drug is so powerful that a single microgram can drastically alter its potency, let's just say that a drug dealer mixing fentanyl in his kitchen may not be sufficiently careful when measuring and handling the drug. One auto transformer, six liters, and hydrous meth. Thorium nitrate. Yo, Mr. White, I can't even pronounce half this shit. It. Even something that is pharmaceutical grade, which means any active or inactive drug was manufactured under good manufacturing practices approved by the FDA, can be devastating in the wrong hands. Best leave fentanyl to the professionals. If you liked the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. If you didn't, be sure to let me know why in the comment section down below. 
And as always, that's been a word from Dr. Chris, Not Your Everyday Ortho, where we see one, do one, teach one.